We have an earthquake swarm going on down there by San Juan Bastista. Have you felt any of these earthquakes? 36 earthquakes within the last 24 hours starting late last night at about 12.10 p.m. Uh, for some reason, USGS doesn't like to uh, record the earthquakes anything above 4.0. So they've revised many of these earthquakes, the largest being a 3.8. The West Coast is getting really active. Uh, ever since that earthquake yesterday there in Alaska, the magnitude 6.0. Stick with me and I'm going to dive into these quakes and what's causing them. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me. It's awesome that you're here once again. These earthquakes being fairly shallow, so it would have been felt over a much wider area. A lot of tension has built up along this area. It's a slow creep area. And there hasn't been a single main shock, which means there could be a uh, probability of a larger earthquake even coming. It started out at 12.10 uh, p.m. with a magnitude 2.7, um, depth of 5 miles. Um, they're saying that it might have been the foreshock for what's currently happening. Then there was a magnitude 3.9, but then they revised it to a magnitude 3.8. That occurred at 12.48 p.m. local time. Then there was a magnitude 4.3 that they revised to a 4.0. These earthquakes are along what they call the Towney Creek in a uh, very tight clustered area, which indicates stress has built up. The magnitude 4.0, I, I was wrong. I thought they revised it. Um, it has been revised. Um, that was initially a 4.3. But 309 people said that they did feel this earthquake. That occurred at 12.57 p.m. local time. Like late last night, very early this morning. Here's the felt report. We got as far as San Francisco. Can you believe that? And we'll bring it down. And as far south as... Looks like Soledad. Can you imagine all the way up to the San Francisco Bay Area? Um, let's see, 139 kilometers, which would be about 86 miles. And there was three reports from that location. Intensity level three. Uh, close to Concord, 129 kilometers. So that would be about 80 miles. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, looks like the uh, energy was transferred to the north, which is not good. A shake alert was sent out. Did you receive a shake alert? And USGS probability of a larger earthquake after this, which we know they just BS about this. A magnitude 3 or greater, they're saying is only a 9%. Or a 4, uh, less than 1%, which is baloney. Here is some of the felt reports that were sent in to EMSC. This one from Indy Wild Pine, um, yeah, Cove. Both quakes were just slight breaks, almost like one long, but with a, a definite um, separation. Back to back shake quakes. One person said that they felt um, four of them banning a good sharp jolt, jolt, excuse me, ground rumbling and rolling, uh, urgent clunky. Two shakes, one right after the other. Here it is. Four strong jolts that shook the house and shaking. Many people were in bed. It says laying in bed, small rolling moment uh, and a shake. Cathedral City, rumble um, in the distance, followed by a big short jolt. French Valley, they said that they felt it. Uh, Rancho uh, Mirage, um, a sharp jolt. Another one from um, uh, Mar Marietta Hot Springs. My whole house shook a little strong. Another one says a jolt. I was on the phone talking to my friend in Gilroy, who had a few yesterday. I reported that. And today. So it's quite a length of the fault possible. And fingers crossed. Well, let me show you. This is an area for the San Encinto Fault. It's been really active. Um, this area is capable of having a magnitude 7. And then we got the San Andreas Fault and the Thomas 
uh, mountain in Clark Vault, further towards uh, the ocean there. And you can see how it splays out. We got a lot of different faults. Um, the San Felipe Fault. And let me bring it out. Yeah, this thing is really active. And of course, the uh, San Andreas Fault Zone. Up over here is, is um, the triple junction for the San Jacinto Fault Zone. There's also the danger, if there's a large earthquake, that the energy could uh, channel going towards the north and then funnel up into Los Angeles. And I've talked about that before. The way the mountain ranges are, um, the energy would travel up through um, the range there. Um, and it kind of got clamped down, narrowed, going into Los Angeles. And then it would spread out once it went through that, that mountain range. And then the damage would be really great. Think of the energy like a water hose where you got the uh, valve at the end and it's cranked shut. And then how it's just at the, where it comes out, it just sprays widely. That would be the effect of a large earthquake. Seeing how they're saying that there is a foreshock, but no main shock could mean it's, it's a possibility that there could be a larger earthquake coming down the road at some time. And we know one day that's going to happen. Just another indication that people do need to be prepared. There's a lot of new people that have moved into the location who don't really know about earthquake preparedness. If there is a large earthquake, don't get in a doorway. That is some really old information. Um, and they're telling people, don't do that now because the door could swing shut, break your arm, break your hand, uh, chop off a finger. Yeah, so don't do that. Stay out of the door. Get under something very large and sturdy. It looks like they're all about 10 miles in depth. Yeah, all about the same depth. So stress definitely has built up there. Um, if you did feel these earthquakes, please, please put your comments down below. Are you prepared? Boy, I hope so. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you.